for tonight's project. We're actually back at my home shop. Um, we're going to try to get everything done that we need out of the shop before we sell our place and we're on the boat full time. And this is one of those projects. So what we're doing here is we're trying to put a center console on our dinghy. Um, trying to do kind of a budget steering uh, throttle gear shift. I don't know if we'll do the throttle gear shift in this video, but we're going to install a center console and then do a budget steering system in here. And I'm just hooking it up to um, a, just a standard 15 horse two stroke Yamaha. And where this is just uh, got a little basically nylon, I think plastic center console setup will be mounted here. And this is the dinghy that came with our boat. And um, it's a pretty good shape dinghy, but it's not anything super fancy. So the whole goal here is just to do a nice affordable setup. I'm gonna actually just run a standard manual steering cable here. We're gonna keep uh, the pull start. It's just real expensive to put an electric start on here. If I do that, I'll just upgrade the whole outboard. Um, but we'll be removing the tiller and run anything to here. And then I'm gonna be building a chair over my gas tank. So uh, this is wooden chair. Here's one of the kids' chairs just for mock-up. Um, won't be what we're running on. But uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go through, make a list of everything we're working with and uh, show you what it takes to, to put a do a budget kind of center console steering setup. So to start with, I just ordered this guy. It's pretty inexpensive. I'll, I'll put a link below, but I think it was 160, 170 bucks. And this is the kit. Um, basically comes with a steering wheel, comes with your cable, your gear section, uh, a cover for that. And then this is the part that you got that just goes through the tilt tube here. Okay, so one thing um, I already kind of hit a hiccup is why I decided to do this video. Why I decided to do this video was I was just gonna knock this thing out as a quick project and the tilt tube sizes are the same. Um, this is a standard kit for uh, up to most full size outboards. Um, but so the same money as I ordered some, a universal steering kit and I did look before and the tilt tube diameter, the part that the rod actually runs through for the steering cable is the same diameter, but it's actually not as wide as a full size outboard. Um, so the first snag I hit is it will still work, but it hangs out pretty far and the rod actually right here will almost hit the pontoon. So what I did is I actually needed a longer tube and what I would say um, is just order a tube uh, tilt tube, you can get it pretty cheap online. Get it for like a 50 horse or something, just like something a little bigger, but not something bigger than like a kicker motor. Um, I actually had a junk 50 horse in the back um, that my dad had around for something for a project or whatever that I stole the tube off. But the tube was pretty, pretty crappy. So I ended up just making it in, in an extension. But for anyone who's watching who are just, I end up welding up a tube and do it. So for anyone's like, I don't want to do any of that, just order a tilt tube a longer tilt tube it's like three inches longer and then that will center up the steering you can still do it without or um maybe or a smaller steering but i didn't want to have to track down a certain small steering setup for this so i'll show you what i did to kind of alleviate this and you can just like i said put a normal size tilt tube in and it should work fine but i got this guy right here so you can see here this is a seven eighths I, mean, I can't remember what the pitch is off the top of my head, but it's a 7 8 nut basically and a 7 8 thread. And so what I'm going to do is, what you do is just because the cable threads on here, I want to shift it back so I can center this a little better. So this guy just goes on here. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all installed. But And then the main cable comes and threads on here and that gives it offset a little better so that when it's sticking out this end again i'll show you when it sticks out this end it's starting out closer to the outboard and it's not starting out over here so all my travels over here i want to keep my travel shorter so i'll kind of show that i'll get this installed real quick and then i'll show that all right so this is the meat and potatoes of it this rod here runs up i got it all greased way over greased so if anyone's laughing at me in the comments i'd rather over grease it and wipe up what's left over so this guy's going to slide through the tilt tube which is pretty standard on every outboard and there she goes and then this nut tightens on here and brings it all together
this down. This guy's just gonna run up here, kind of pressing it's there. So yeah, we just run, we basically, so this is the push-pull. For anyone that's not watching that isn't familiar with this. And as you turn the steering wheel, this goes in and out. And then what we'll do is this right here, I'm gonna run a crossover bar, which you can also purchase. Um, just purchase them in different sizes and they're adjustable. I'm gonna make one because I have enough material sitting here. I actually have stainless sitting around and benders and all that stuff. So I can make an exact fit one, which is what I'm gonna do. So basically the bolt will go here, the arm comes around and pins into here. And as this goes in and out, your outboard's gonna go back and forth. So it's just adapting that to that. One or two. So I've got the tube out now. You can see it stops right short of the pontoon. So that's what the whole point of that adapter was. Before you would have just had a little less steering. We got that in there. We're gonna basically try to find center now. And so we're gonna measure the rod. We're gonna mark it or measure it. How much is sticking out all the way one way, which would be uh, turning left and then put it all the way out, which is turning right. And then we're gonna snap in the middle of that and then just pull that rod in so that it's so we find where center is and then we'll set our s link bar the part the bar that connects from the cable to the outboard we'll set that at center now you can be really particular about this or you can just kind of guess it's up to you worst case scenario you're going to turn a little bit more one way or the other i really want it to be centered so that's one thing i'm, I'm going to take my time in doing it but you can ballpark it if you're not that worried about it it's, it's not a very crucial thing but it's just something depends on pick you are so we got this stick out here and I'll measure from the nut. It's like I'm inch and a half out at this center hole here. And then I'll take this guy and I'll run it out. and a quarter so we'll split that in the middle inch and a half ten and a quarter and that'll give us our center shouldn't double check that first measure so then what we'll do is we'll see this little arm out too that's actually pretty good Back just a smooch. And there we are, 438. So, if you want to come around here actually. So, now this rod is hanging out at center. That'll be the center point. So, obviously, when you go left, it comes all the way to here. When you go right, it comes almost to the pontoon. And that will be hooked up with here to here with an S bar. So, it'll come up. I'm going to actually have it be adjustable and it'll hook to here. So, that when this thing's all the way out, Outboard will be pulled this way when it's all the way in, outboard will be pulled that way. So that's kind of the just the ba basic of how this system works. It's very simple, very easy to hook up. Um, again, double check your tilt tube size, but this is like I said, a pretty standard 15 horse. Um, and this system fit right in there without a little modification. Um, so the next thing we'll be doing is, I don't have this actually mounted, is this uses three bolts and a mounting plate. So I'll be drilling a hole in here and mounting here after I mount this. So I needed to, I recommend people can do it a couple different ways to skin a cat, but I'm gonna set this to where I want, mark the floor and then set this in. Cause the biggest thing you don't wanna do is, is bend this cable as much as possible. Every time you bend it, you're gonna add resistance to your steering. So try not to bend as much as possible. So I'm gonna kind of run it through and end up mocking it up. And then I'm gonna scoot the center console back and forth until I get the ideal angles on my cables just for smoother steering. And then that's when I'll pull this back out and I'll mount it to the floor and then I'll actually really start doing all the big stuff. So that's what's on the agenda for tonight. She's camera shy. <laughs> She's everything shy. I'm scared of it. Kind of see here. I've got the steering part here. I got the cable ran through the bottom. I ended up trimming some of the center console because the floor here has a little bit of slope when it comes up to the pontoon. Um, and I'm just trying to suck it up all the way. It's that pontoon. So it only, if you don't trim it, it would 
sit out an inch or two, which isn't a big deal, but I won't do it. But it also made a good hole to come through this cable. So try to route this guy up here. This is another reason I leave the center console loose, so you can kind of move it around, get it happy, and then I'll secure it. So I punched this big hole in here. I'm gonna grab the camera so you gotta see. So you put this big hole in here and then this is the mount bracket. So we'll set that in there like that. Three bolts. And then the steering, I guess it, whatever you wanna call it, steering box, I guess, I don't know, whatever. Where the cable goes in that with the shaft, everything will come through bolt to here and then you just have a nice plastic cover that goes over and hards it um so i'm gonna get ready to drill it i just kind of want to show that real quick so i got the bracket in now i'm gonna actually gonna put the steering assembly in and bolt that in and show you how that looks. This will be difficult because now I gotta fight the cable. And so there's multiple holes in this. These mounts. There's multiple holes in these mounts and you only need three uh, to actually mount this thing. So they do that so it's clockable. So you've got that big section that the, the cable actually goes in. So you want to clock it so it makes the best sense. Uh, a, for room, it's actually stuck to the bridge, and B, so this has a nice angle. Um, these cables are pretty resilient to making corners, but anytime you make a corner or tighten that corner, um, it's more resistance. And so um, manual steering's already are, are resistance. Uh, so the more you bend it and everything, the, the tighter it's gonna be, the more you bend it, the tighter it's gonna be to turn. So what you want to do is come up, and I'm actually going to put it at kind of a 45 so that the cable comes up and then comes in at an angle. I don't want to pinch it at a 90 or anything. This, this 90 on the end here on the transom is pretty hard. So after doing that, I wish it wasn't that hard, but being a little narrow boat, it's just what it is what it is. Um, I'm going to try and soften the bend as much as possible after that hard 90 at the outboard. So you can see here, you got, like I was talking about, you can clock this however you want. Three bolts here, three bolts here. Don't mind this oblong one. <laughs> I, I didn't have enough, so I gotta replace that later. And then see if I can give you a shot up in here. You can kind of see it up in there. It's hard to see, but you can see it up in there. Um, you have your main cable, and then this is the excess, basically. And so I'll end up P clipping securing these. And then I've got the cable here, so I'm gonna end up tighten this up and sticking this down in here. The shot's kind of terrible because I'm just trying to need more hands, but you can kind of see here. So I mean it's it's Definitely a little firm, but it's uh, it's not bad. I mean, so I can do it with one finger. So, I mean, it does have a few bends, so it gets a little snug, but it's a short cable too, so that's gonna help out with stuff too, but that's kind of the gist of that. So we'll put the cover on here. And now that I have this, this is what I was talking about. I can kind of move it around and see where it's ideal and then that's when I'm going to mount it to the floor basically is when I find out what's ideal. So if anyone's, or 
So for those of you watching, um, I'm just doing a quick run through. I just want to do this to see, show, show people what it, what is involved. Couldn't find a whole lot online. Um, one thing I'll note is I'll do a hard wait afterwards in the comments, but I should only be adding 15, 20 pounds of this with all this. I mean, this this thing probably weighs a couple pounds. It's really light. Um, this assembly, 5, 10 pounds maybe, and then controls. So um, if you're not going with electric start and adding a battery and all this stuff, it's not adding that much weight to it. Um, just if I'm just doing the bare necessities like I'm doing. So some might watch this to see if it's worth it and be like, no, nah, it's way too much work, which I get um, to us. We've got me, Steph, three kids and two dogs that we're going to be taking to shore and stuff. So for me, having be able to take my hands off the tiller and grab a kid or a dog if they go over something is why I'm doing this. It's just a lot easier. I can have one hand here. Um, whenever I have a tiller, you kind of keep everyone out of the back of the boat and everyone else is up front. So that's the main reason we're doing it. But I just want to do this video, kind of show people and see you can watch it, make a decision if this is something you want to do. Um, I know it's not for everyone. Um, but it's just out there so i don't see a lot didn't see anything really when i was looking for it so i figured i'd do this and just kind of post a video of it um so i'm gonna start buttoning this guy up here and then i'm gonna get this mounted and uh then what we're gonna do after that is work on a few other things so i got it mounted in here i got a few screws in it um i'm gonna end up building a shelf over here to kind of cover the cable and then i'm gonna p-clip this cable down so it's not just flopping around um and then i'm gonna reinforce that gap but i mean it's in here pretty good i mean i'm gonna do a little bit more because it's just screwed down to this fiberglass floor but give an idea with space and my little mock-up chair here this will be a the gas tank and the uh i'm gonna build an aluminum bench seat over here um but yeah you can kind of see the space this is a 10 footer 10 foot dinghy so i mean you got pretty good space here still i mean to have dogs and kids and all that stuff but anywho Okay, so this guy's mounted now. You can see in here, it's recessed in, bolted. So, took the keyway out. Everything seems to be working good. Um, so now they give you this little cover. Keyway washer nut in. Take that guy. Finish it off. And it turns out to be a pretty slick little setup. I mean, honestly. Um, also with this, so uh, this center console is like a universal one I ordered off of Amazon. Actually, it was it was a couple hundred. It's probably the most expensive part about this actually. But the nice thing about it is you can mount it here. Or here obviously this was too low for me but anyways you, you mount it here or here mount it wherever but it made a really nice mounting location so you can see and better shot of that now that I and I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the tension honestly because I did have to put some tight angles on it but so far I've only been out here I mean I come out here after the kids go down and working out here for an hour or so every night so I probably only have a couple hours in this this may seem like a big job it really is not um so what i'm gonna do is now this is in i'm gonna start working on the seat um get some final stuff in and then still have to get the controls in and then we're gonna do a video we're just gonna take it on the bay for the day we're just gonna drop it in and go do a run and see what it is but i mean so far i'm really happy with it uh this can make it a lot easier um and hell just having the kids run the dinghy i mean they're getting old enough now or they can run a, a motor it's gonna be a lot easier having them cruise around with the thing that's got a steering wheel so that'll be nice for them um but yeah so far pretty happy with it i mean it's a pretty low budget build so so far i'm really happy